These are five of the biggest mistakes that swimmers make in the pool and in open water competition. Now, some of the things that I'm gonna talk about, I've seen over and over as a swim coach, and I've also personally experienced as an athlete in the pool and in open water. Number one is overthinking it. Remember guys, you've already put in the work. You've swum back and forth in the pool countless times. You've done this over and over, and sometimes we just psych ourselves out. We overthink it. And this applies not only to swimming, but other parts of our lives as well. It's something as easy as swimming down the pool and coming back. Heck, in a 50 freestyle long course or a 50 race long course, you just start at one end and you finish on the other end. A lot of times when you're doing open water, you just start swimming and then you finish swimming. It's that easy, but we overthink it. We try and put so much strategy into it when we should be putting that mental effort in training. And a lot of the times we put in the work, but then we overthink it anyway. So the number one mistake is just not overthinking it. You wanna do the mental prep before the event. And this includes visualization. So you don't wanna be standing there behind the block. I've experienced this before. You're standing behind the block or you're about to jump in the open water and you're just thinking about every step of the race. Okay, I'm gonna step on the blocks. I'm gonna really be explosive with my, with my feet, then my hands, then I'm gonna enter the water in a streamline, then I'm gonna do the pull, then I'm gonna... No, you do this all in training and the mental visualization happens well before the race. So that way you get up to the race, you relax, you take a deep breath, you smile and you dive in and you go. So just remember you've done this before and the most important thing you can do in that moment when you're standing on the beach or you're standing behind the block is positive self-talk. Reminding yourself that you've done this over and over and you don't need to overthink it. You're there to have a good time and the results will happen because you put in the work time and time again in the weeks and months and even years leading up to that event. So just remember that. Now the second biggest mistake that I see swimmers often make and I've done myself is simply not warming up or warming down correctly. Now at the end of the video, I'm actually going to show you a fantastic warm up that's designed for speed. But before we get into the nitty gritty of that, just remember that it's so important to stay warm, to stay dry before your event. Your body is like a vessel. And so if you're cold, if you're shivering, if you're doing an outdoor competition, I just did an outdoor competition. And on one of the days it was freezing. The sun wasn't there. It even started drizzling and I was ill prepared. I didn't have a sweater to wear with me. It was in the car. What was I thinking? So this is a big mistake, just not being prepared both in the water and out of the water. This also includes your hydration and nutrition. If you know that you're not gonna be competing for six hours, but you have to be there early for whatever reason, and you don't have anything to eat, you don't have anything to fuel yourself, nothing to drink, that's a mistake. If you don't have any money to buy some snacks or to buy a water or fluids or whatever you need, that's a big mistake as well. You also have to know your body and what it needs. Some people need a longer warm up. some people need multiple warm-ups, whether it's doing a dry land warm up or doing a lot of stuff in the pool, mental visualization. And the more you compete and the more you get acclimated to all these things, the better you're gonna be, the more you're gonna know your body and you're gonna be able to more adequately do a proper warm up and also a proper cool down. Again, at the end of the video, I'm gonna share that with you guys so you guys are most prepared. Now, before we get into the next biggest mistake, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Ultra Swim 33.3. Ultra Swim 33.3 hosts epic adventure swim races in some of the most beautiful locations around the world. If you've wanted to swim the English Channel, but swimming 33.3 kilometers in one shot is not your cup of tea, then Ultra Swim 33.3 races are made just for you. You'll swim in a new location each day, doing a total distance of 33.3 kilometers point to point over four days. Think rally racing, not NASCAR or F1, so you won't have to swim endless laps. You can race solo, do a relay with a buddy, or compete on a team of up to four swimmers. But it's more than just a swim race. It's a one-of-a-kind experience that allows you to push your limits and challenge yourself with like-minded swimmers from around the world who crave adventure. There's an epic race coming up in Montenegro, September 29 to October 2nd, and this looks like it's going to be an incredible experience. Montenegro has some of the most beautiful coastline and stunning calm fjords in all of Europe. So if you're looking for something to train for this summer, this is it. Head over to the link down below to register for the Montenegro event. Use the code US333MSP and you'll get two 33.3 euro vouchers to spend on official gear to get you ready for the race. Thanks again to Ultra Swim 33.3 for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it.
The third biggest mistake I see swimmers make is last minute changes. We already talked about this in number one, not overthinking it. You've done this so many times. So don't change anything. You've done it over and over. You have your race plan. These are three of the biggest areas that I see swimmers completely lose it on the day of the race or in the race. Number one is breath control. If you're doing the 50 freestyle or a shorter race, you know exactly when and where to take your breaths. In the 50 free, maybe you take zero, maybe you take one, two, three, whatever the number is, don't change it. You train to do it in a certain way, so it's time to execute. If you're swimming a longer race and you breathe every two or every four, whatever it is, this is not the time to get creative. You can do that in training, focus on it there, and then apply it in the race. But because you've already done that in all the countless sessions you've had leading up to the competition, this is not when you get creative and experiment. So make sure you stick with your game plan. The same applies for tempo. How fast will you move your arms? How fast will you be in the first 50? That's your pacing. So not going out too strong, too slow, your breathing. All of these are things that you should have locked down before you get to the actual competition because if you try and change it, there's a high likelihood you're gonna mess it up. So don't do that and focus on applying what you've done in training. Now the fourth biggest mistake is sort of related to that, but it's using new equipment. So whether that's new goggles, a swimsuit, a wetsuit, right? Imagine you're about to do this 33.3 race in Montenegro and you decide, you know what? We're gonna try new goggles today. I've never used them before. We're gonna swim in a new wetsuit that I've never, I've never worn a wetsuit. Heck, let's just sign up for this. And we're not gonna hydrate ourselves. You're asking for a disaster. If you're used to a certain hydration plan, certain swimsuits, certain brands, certain type of goggles, probably should have a few extra pairs of each of those to make sure that you don't have any last minute changes. Now it's okay to be a little bit more spontaneous and to be comfortable wearing different suits or different types of goggles, but you wanna reduce the things you have to think about. You don't wanna introduce new variables to your race, whether it's a 50 freestyle or a 5K open water race, you wanna have these things locked down so that way two, three, four, five weeks before the event that you're going to, you already know what you're gonna wear and if something happens, you do have a little bit of mental flexibility to change your goggles or do whatever you need to do, but you've at least practiced with those goggles or you have the experience of doing that. Now, as you've been swimming for longer and longer and you've spent more time in this sport, it actually becomes a little bit easier to be flexible on some of these things, but that's just because you have more experience. If you're a newer swimmer, you really don't wanna have to think about any of this and you just wanna have your go-to goggles, your go-to swim cap, and then get another one of those, goggles, cap, suit, hydration, and make sure everything is there in your race bag, ready to go. Now the fifth biggest mistake I see swimmers make all over the time is focusing on things you cannot control. It is so easy to focus on things that are out of your control. It's sometimes it hurts my brain just seeing this as a coach, and that could be focusing on other swimmers. You can't control what other swimmers are gonna do. So don't base your race plan, your warm up, your nutrition, your mindset, the way you talk about your event, don't worry about other people. You've done your training, they've done their training. Wish them the best of luck before and after the race. Congratulate them and do your own thing. Now most swimmers don't have to experience this, but it is a reality. If you go to a bigger competition, there is media. You feel the pressure of other people watching you. Maybe you're not swimming at the Olympics, but if you swim at a bigger competition, there might be other people there, journalists, other swimmers documenting what's going on with a team behind them, and that can sort of get into your head. But you know what? You can't control what the news agency is doing, what someone's friend is taking their photo. Don't worry about it. Worry about what you can control and don't worry about any of that other stuff. Another variable is the water temperature. If you're swimming in open water, guess what? You could complain all day about how cold or warm the water is and you can't change it. Instead, you can focus on what you can control. That might be your wetsuit, your swimsuit, your warm up, what you wear out of the water, bringing a hoodie to the pool, having an extra towel, doing all of these things because you can't control the temperature temperature of the water. Another one is sun exposure. That could be wearing sunscreen, having a nice sun hat, making sure that you don't worry about it if you're swimming the 100 IM or the 100 backstroke or the 200 backstroke. I swam in a meet that was outside and just in time for my 100 IM, the sun was right smack in the middle of the sky and I could barely see anything. And now I could use that as an excuse like, oh, the sun decided to show up. 
but I can't control that. The earth is rotating and it was a beautiful day. So the best that I can do is just smile and have a good time. So don't complain about things that you can't control. Don't focus on them and don't overthink it. Now let's talk about this warm up right here. Oh, by the way, we have a bonus. It's have fun because if you're not having fun, what are we doing? So let's talk about the workout here. Need for speed, 100 freestyle. Now this applies beyond just the 100 freestyle. And if you're curious where I got this set, it is actually in the My Swim Pro app. And this is the warm up for the need for speed test set. We have five different versions of this. Everything adapts to your skill level, the intervals, so I don't have the intervals on the board. But let me walk through this warm up, and hopefully you can take some pieces from it as I explain it. Now this doesn't need to be the warm up that you do if you're trying to swim fast in a 50 or 100 or 200, but at least the elements that are here in this set, you can apply to your own training and your own meet warm up. Same concept applies for open water. So let's break it down. First of all, if you notice, it actually looks like a mini workout. Now your warm up, whether you're doing this uh, dry land or even open water, it should feel like a mini warm up. And ideally the training that you're doing leading up to the competition is actually very similar to what you plan on doing in the competition. So the Need for Speed test set is a 1-100 freestyle maximum effort to see how fast you can go in a 100 freestyle. So let's take the warm up of that test set and see what it looks like. We start with a 300 freestyle. Now this is designed to just get the shoulders going, get the blood flowing, get your heart rate up, and really get that full muscle activation. Next we're gonna go 450s kick. Now I like to do backstroke a lot. You can exchange the kick with backstroke, especially if you're in a, a competition pool and there's a lot of other swimmers. It might be difficult. You might do kick swim. You might throw in some backstroke. Then we're gonna go 425s drill. Now the Drill really depends on what you need to warm up. If you're a swimmer like myself that really needs to get their legs activated, if I didn't do the kick, I'd definitely do something like a six kick switch or three strokes and 12 kicks. If my legs are activated, I'm feeling good, I might need to work on that catch, really bring in to get into the activation, the early vertical form, so I'll do fist drill, or there's a number of other drills that you can do in that period. And that's kind of like the warm up of the warm up. Next we have the preset or the main set before the actual event. So here we have 450s freestyle, we're gonna build, we're gonna descend those, try and get the heart rate elevated, maybe we go a little bit faster on each of them, because it's gonna be difficult to have an interval in a warm up pool. Then we do 425s freestyle variable speed, so we're working on fast breakouts, we're doing some builds, and maybe the last one is at a pretty good hard effort, get the heart rate up, feel really good, and then we're gonna do a 100 freestyle perfect technique. Now you might be looking at this and you say, you know what, that's way too much, I'm gonna be so tired for my actual race, or I'm gonna do two warm-ups, I'm actually gonna split this up in half, I'm gonna get in once and do something like this a little bit longer, and then do a second warm-up, maybe 30 minutes to 60 minutes before your actual race, and that's gonna be the more technical, speed-oriented to really fine-tune and get those muscles both mentally and physically firing. So regardless of which method you do, just remember your warm up before a competition, whether it's in open water or in the pool, should be really something that you mimic in training. And that's why the MySwim Pro app is great because you're able to do a structured workout every single day or every other day whenever you swim. And if you are training to compete, you have something that's gonna really lead you in that direction. So let me know what questions you guys have down below in the comments. If you thought this video was great, you're gonna love a video I did, five mistakes for breathing. I'll see you over there and happy swimming.